Hi everyone, we're going to move right into our next system here. So we are going into our first organ system, um, which is the integumentary system, or something you might be more familiar with. This is our skin. Okay. So an organ is two or more types of tissues grouped together to perform specialized functions. So our first organ here that we're going to be talking about is our skin. So the skin is our largest organ in the body. And talking about some of their functions, there are quite a few. So try to make sure we write these down. So the first here is protection. So protection from harmful substances, from germs, bacteria, and virus, UV radiation, um, so our skin is really important for protection because it is the outer layer. It's what um, the world experiences here is our skin. Our next one is excretion of wastes. We, our skin is really good for regulation of body temperature here. Production of vitamin D. So this is really important because this is one of the only vitamins that we produce ourselves. So when cholesterol in the skin cells are exposed to UV light or UV radiation, our body is going to produce vitamin D here. So vitamin D is important for the absorption of calcium and phosphorus that comes from our food. And that's really important for bones and teeth in our body. So this production of vitamin D is probably one of the highest um, functions here for our integumentary system. So another one, our adipose connective tissue in our skin, our subcutaneous layer, that's really going to be a lot for insulation and cushioning here. So insulation and energy storage as well. So about one pound of fat is about 3,000 calories. And again, important things here is insulation, energy storage, and cushioning. There are also receptors in our skin. So receptors are going to help us read the world around us. So different types of receptors here is going to be touch or pressure, hot and cold receptors, or damage and pain. So now we're going to get right into the different layers of skin. So the different layers here are our epidermis, our dermis, um, and our last one that isn't listed here, but we're going to talk about is our subcutaneous layer. So our epidermis is different types of stratified squamous. So we have different layers in within these stratified squamous epithelium tissues um, that we're going to talk about as well. So there's five layers associated here. Our stratum corneum contains keratinized cells that lack nutrients. So that's just our very top, our superficial layer. Our stratum lucidum. These, this layer specifically is only found in high um, shedding areas. So our palms and the soles of our feet, we tend to have a lot of touch with those. So we have an extra layer of skin here. Our stratum granulosum is underneath that. Our stratum spinosum. And then our last layer here is our stratum basal. So this is our very bottom layer of skin um, of this stratified squamous epithelium. And these cells are actually going to reproduce and grow. So this is where you're going to see cell division occur within um, our tissues here. So if we take a look at these different layers, we have our stratum corneum. This is our very, very top. This is all of our dead tissue here. Our stratum lucidum. Remember, this is only on our hands and feet. Our stratum granulosum is this very large layer here. Oh, I'm sorry. It's right here right underneath. Our stratum spinosum is that large layer here. And then our stratum basal is just that last 
little row of cells right here. That is our stratum basal. And then remember, for epithelial tissues, we were always going to have this basement membrane right on the bottom that connects it to our uh, connective tissue, along with free space. So our free space is for skin is going to be the air, because that's the outermost part of our body, the most superficial. And then underneath all that, you're going to start seeing some connective tissue in our dermis. So our um, epidermis is going to lack blood vessels. In healthy skin, um, our production of epidermal cells is balanced with the loss of cells to, in the stratum corneum. So the more cells we lose, the faster we're going to reproduce cells here. Um, and that right here, our rate of uh, cellular reproduction increases where the skin is rubbed or pressed more uh, regularly. So that would be our hands and our feet, where we have the most um, touch, I would say. So our rate is going to be higher in these areas. And our result here is going to be calluses on our palm. So if you play guitar, you might have calluses on your fingers because you have a lot of um, touch there, or corns on our feet. And these are just harder, more protected layers of skin there. Another thing that you're going to see in our ep uh, epidermis here are melanocytes. So melanocytes are cells that are going to produce a protein called melanin. And this melanin actually gives our skin its color. So melanin is a dark brown pigment that protects our skin from UV radiation. This is why we get tanner in the summer because there's more UV radiation. So we need to produce more melanin for protection. So melanocytes are primarily found in our stratum basal, so that bottom layer of our um, epidermis. And they have extensions that go upward in between our neighboring epidermal cells. So these really, really dark, this is our melanin here in our cells. Um, that's going to produce that um, pigment that is going to protect us from the UV radiation. So as you can see here, we have our melanocyte. It branches up like this. And those little brown dots are those, is that melanin that is producing those protective um, UV radiation cells. So if you look at this image right here, these dark brown these are going to be our melanocytes here, right in the bottom stratum basal layer of our skin. We're going to move on to the dermis. So remember our top part is our epidermis. The next one is our dermis. This is our kind of middle layer here, and it's going to be mostly composed of um, connective tissues. So the boundary between the derma, um, epidermis and dermis is uneven, and this is causes our fingerprints to form. So if you look at your fingers right now, you're going to see all different kinds of swirls in there. That's because of that uneven barrier between our epidermis and our dermis. So it is mostly composed of irregular dense connective tissue here. So our dermis is, like I said, mostly composed of our connective tissues specifically our irregular dense connective. Okay. Also that's going to be found in our dermis is receptors for touch, temperature, and pain. So some of these are uh, passion corpuscles. So these are sensory receptor, uh, receptors that are going to be stimulated by really heavy pressure. So if someone's laying down on you, you're going to engage these corpuscles. Where our Meissner's corpuscles uh, sense very light touch. So that would be maybe someone gently tapping you on the shoulder, um, you feeling a raindrop, that's going to be our Meissner's corpuscles. And then muscle tissue is going to help us produce some facial expression here. And something that you may have heard of are erector pili muscles, and I'm going to talk about those with our image. So right here, this is going to be our 
um, passing corpuscle. So you can really see um, this deep pressure here. And here are going to be our Meisner's. So very, very light touch um, in these little corpuscles here is going to be able to be detected, um, which is going to be really important. So other things that we're going to find in our dermis is going to be nerve fibers, hair follicles, sebaceous glands, which are sweat glands, Oh, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. Sebaceous glands actually produce sebum, which is something a little different, but we also have sweat glands in here and blood vessels. So if we take a look at this picture, this is a picture of our entire skin layer here. So with this really dark purple up here, this is gonna be our epidermis. And all of this right here is our dermis layer. So a couple things that I'm gonna point out to you here, right here, this is going to be a root hair, which is going to be important. We can also see some different glands here as well. So this is a sebaceous gland, and usually um, they're also incorporated with our hair follicles as well. Um, so you can see another gland here in our tissue. And then our last layer here is our subcutaneous layer, or our hypodermis. This is the lowest part of our um, skin, our integumentary system here. And it's going to be composed mainly of loose connective tissue and adipose connective tissue. So this is where that st heat, uh, storage and cushioning and insulation layer comes into play here. Um, so this is where we're going to stop for now. We're going to talk a little bit more about specifically what's found in these different layers. And if you have any questions, make sure you reach out. Okay, thank you.